Father, Lord God, I thank you. I give you all the glory because I know on this very program, oh God, that we are about to do, God of my salvation, you shall rebuke people's life. You shall rebuke their altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every destroyed altar, oh God, be rebuked. On this mountain, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone's life that is called destroyed, everyone's life that is called limitation, on this mountain, oh God, as we embark, oh God, in our prayers, God of my salvation, rebuild, oh God, repair them to heaven blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your kingdom rest upon them. Every of their expectation, let it be answered. In the name of Jesus, you did it in the time of Joel, Lord. You did it in the time of the book of Joel. Father, when the people forsake you, oh God, their altar was broken. But when they return back to you, oh God, you came back to restore everything that the Pama one, the Kanka one, the locusts, the invaders have eaten. You restored them. God, you are not biased. You are not respecter of any man. What you did in the time of Joel, come and do it again in this our generation. Come and do it again, oh God, in the life of everyone that is watching me, oh God, that is experiencing limitation, that is experiencing disgrace, that is experiencing delay rejection restore them back to honor be jealous of your people you are the one oh lord that died for them be jealous of your people and restore their honor no longer oh god we mock us mock them anymore in the mighty name of jesus christ what you did in the time of 12 come and do it again in this our generation come on Hallelujah. Glory unto Jesus. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you for joining in today's program. Today is the second day. God bless you. As you join in, may God bless you. Please don't forget to share the program. As you do that, God bless you. As you are doing that, God bless you. With that being said, let's lift up our voice and begin to celebrate God and give God all the glory. I am excited to see the day two of this program. And we are in our Easter season. Those of you celebrating Easter, God bless you for celebrating the Easter. This is our Easter period um, when we remember the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So lift up your voice and begin to celebrate God for the death of Jesus Christ, what he brought for us, what he did for us, the resurrection and restoration that he brought upon our life. Lift up your voice and begin to celebrate that God. Call him by his name. Call him that very name that you know that is that name is good for him. Begin to address God according to his personalities. Begin to address God and thank him. Remember one, just one thing the Lord Almighty have done for you. I I know that it is more than one, but begin to celebrate God. Begin to celebrate God and give God all the praises. Begin to call him by his personality. I call God El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. I call God the Lord Elion, the Most High God. I call him Adonai, the Lord, our Master, God of my salvation. I give you glory. As I am celebrating God, begin to celebrate your own God. If you know that you are fasting and you are in this program to seek the face of God, lift up your voice and begin to thank God for the two that the Lord Almighty, I know you will meet me this very day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I celebrate you, Master Jesus Christ. Be thou exalted, great God. Be thou exalted, Holy Spirit of God. I celebrate you, King of kings and the Lord of lords. I celebrate you, Adonai. I celebrate you, Lord of lords, the rose of Sharon, the resurrection and life. I thank you, the power of God. I thank you, the one that give breath. I don't know the Bible said that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Our God is 
is Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. Our God is Jehovah Shalom, the, the God of peace, the one that has brought us peace. Our God is Jehovah Sabuad, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the heaven armies. Begin to celebrate that true God. Yes, one true God. That is his name. We call God by his name. We celebrate your mercy. We celebrate your faithfulness, oh God. I call you faithful. I judge you faithful, oh God. I call you Lord, our banner, Jehovah Nisi. I call you Jehovah Ra. Lord, you are our shepherd. We shall not want, oh God of my salvation. I will praise you at all times, and your praises will continually be in my mouth, oh God, because your word said, let everything that has breath praise you, oh Lord. I celebrate you, King of Kings. I celebrate you for the death on the cross of Calvary that you died to set us free. Lord, my God, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the praise, oh God, and we enter your court with thanksgiving. And we enter your court with praises, oh God. Father, for you have done wonderful things. Father, you have done great things that no one can fathom, oh God. Blessed be your holy name for your wonderful work. I give you all the glory. God, you are name is called El Shaddai, oh Lord, the God of Elijah, we thank you, the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you, Master of the Universe, I thank you, the Emperor and the King, I celebrate you, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, be thou exalted, oh God, be thou exalted, oh God, be thou exalted, oh God, I lift your name up, oh God, above heaven, so oh Lord, I lift your name up, oh God, above the nations of the earth, there is no one like you, oh God. You are marvelous. You are excellent. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God that heals. You are the sustainer. You are our security. You are the one that brought us liberty. Lord, my Father, I thank you. You are the lamp of God, oh Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you. I am that I am. Blessed be your holy name. You have been doing wonderful things right from the deception of this earth till now you are still doing wonderful things for your name you are the same yesterday today and you will be forever lord since the deception of our life oh lord you have been doing wonderful things and you are still doing wonderful things blessed be your holy name heavenly king blessed be your holy name abba father we celebrate your faithfulness we celebrate your righteousness we celebrate your mercifulness oh god you are full of compassion you are full of mercy you show mercy to thousands of generations. The river of your mercy never run dry. I celebrate you, Abba. I celebrate you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. At this time, begin to ask God for mercy. 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 Mercy is what prevails. Mercy is what exalt, exalt us. Begin to cry out for mercy. The Lord God, I know that I'm a sinner. I also confess the sins of my bloodline. Have compassion upon me. I am not just confessing my own sin. I am also confessing the sins of my parents. I am also confessing the sins of my bloodline. Have compassion upon me, mighty God. Have mercy. Show pity upon me on this mountain. Forgive me my iniquities, oh God. But the Bible said that all men have sinned and they have come short of God's glory. If you know that you are considered a sinner, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that have justified us. Begin to pour ask your hearts to God. As many that we cry out for mercy, they shall receive mercy. Begin to cry out. No one is perfect in this world, but it is only the mercy of God that is prevailing. It is only the mercy of God that is speaking for us. Begin to cry out for mercy and say, Lord, show compassion upon me. Have mercy upon my own sin. Have mercy upon the sins of my ancestors. Have mercy upon the sins of my parents, the sins of my bloodline, oh Lord. Have compassion and show me mercy wipe them away in the name of jesus christ you are going to pray to god today you are going to say god i enter into your court this day and let my book be open i enter into your courtroom this day all righteous judge and let my book be open before you Mighty God, I am repeating this thing so you will, you will know what I am saying. That because there are a lot of accusations.
accusation Satan is bringing to God daily because the Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You are going to declare, you are going to say, Lord, I stand in your court of heaven. I stand in your courtroom this day. I am not running away from Satan because I know Satan has been bringing allegations, accusations against me. So God, I come into your courtroom this day. Let my own book be open. I am here to answer my charges. Let my book be open before you. Let your court be seated. Let your court, oh God, be seated. So much Satan to your court. I am repeating this thing so that you will get what I am saying because allegations accusation against us will be deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan have no right. Satan have no right. We are going to use the court of heaven by saying, Lord, let your court be seated and let my book of destiny, let my own book be open before you, oh Lord, and summon Satan so much Satan to this court, oh God of my salvation. I am here to answer my allegations. I am here to answer the accusations that Satan has been bringing over to you. And I pray, oh Lord, now I begin to say to the Lord, according to the book of Colossians 2, verses 14, the Bible said that Jesus Christ took away all our iniquity. Now I begin to declare that word, that it is written, Jesus took all your iniquity. Make sure that you are picturing that you are in the courtroom of God and your book is open before God. Even if you cannot see anything, just begin to say, let the court be seated, let the court of God be seated and let my own book of life be open before God. Let my own book of God, my own book of life be open before God and let Satan stand in the court today. Let that demon that is charging me up and bringing accusation to God, let that, let that demon be, be summoned to the court of God and God is now you are going to say, the Lord God Almighty, the righteous judge, it is written that Christ took away all your sin. Christ took away all your iniquities and nailed them to the cross. It is easy. It is very easy. Simple scripture. According to the book of Colossians 2, 14 to 15, you are going to declare it. The God of my salvation, let your court be seated. Let my book be open before you. Some of that demon that is always accusing me, let them come before your court, oh God of my salvation in the name of jesus christ and oh god let the blood of jesus christ have justified me the blood of jesus christ took away all my accusations the blood of jesus christ took away all my sins lord god for that reason let every accusation be silented let every accusation be silented if you know that you understand that prayer begin to pray that prayer right now because if your allegations the accusation is not cancelled many of our our prayer request can be held down. And that is why we are praying this prayer that let my book be open, oh God of my salvation. And every accusation that is written against me, let it be deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ took away all your sin. Jesus Christ took away all your sin and nailed them to the cross. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be your defense. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be your defense and delete all your accusations. Every accusation that Satan has brought before God, every accusation session that Satan have brought before God concerning your bloodline, let them be deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now you are going to tell God, the Lord God of my salvation, revoke every legal right that Satan have over my life. Every legal right and legal claim that Satan have over my life and destiny. Oh God, as I stand before your court, revoke that right. Revoke that right of Satan. Every legal right that Satan have over my destiny. Every legal right that Satan have over my expectations. Oh, righteous judge, remove that legal right. Is someone praying that prayer? Is someone understanding what I am saying? Begin to declare it with your own mouth. Don't type amen for my own prayer. Say with your own mouth, begin to declare with your own mouth that every accusation that I have brought to the court of God, accusing you day or night, that today, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the blood of Jesus Christ give God that right to blot out that accusation. Let the blood of Jesus Christ give God the right to delete that accusation. In the name of 
of Jesus Christ and let God revoke the legal rights of Satan from your expectation. Let Satan legal right be taken so that you will receive your healing, so that you will receive your restoration. If someone praying that prayer with all seriousness, if someone praying that prayer with all seriousness, that every allegation of rape, every allegation of bloodshed, every allegation of sin, every allegation, whatever thing that happened in your family that Satan has brought to God, let them be deleted. Let them be deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to open your mouth and begin to cry unto judge the righteous judge. Make sure you are addressing God as a righteous judge that every allegation against your family, every allegation against you in the court of heaven that Satan has brought, let them be deleted and cancelled to death by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right now, let the blood of Jesus Christ give God the right to delete them by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And also ask that the legal claim Satan have the legal right Satan have over your life, over your expectation for your prayers not to be answered. God should remove that legal right from the hand of Satan. God should remove that legal claim from the hand of Satan. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now begin to thank God and say, God, thank you. Thank you because you have removed the legal right from the hand of Satan, my prayers will be answered. On this fasting, my prayers will be answered on this fasting. My prayers will be answered on this fasting because of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now begin to wake on the person of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, don't pass me by. All power belongs to you. Don't pass me by on this service. Don't pass me by when you are distributing your, when you are distributing your restoration glory, when you are distributing your restoration breakthrough. Don't pass me by holy spirit of god don't pass me by on this service don't pass me by on this program change my name change my story Turn my expectations to congratulations. Turn my expectation to congratulations. Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you. Visit my life. Is someone calling the name of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, visit my life. Change my story. By your power, Holy Spirit. By the power of your resurrection, Holy Spirit. Change my own story. Change my life. Change my situation. Give me a new name. On this mountain, turn my expectations to congratulations. Turn my disappointment to appointment turn my failure to success oh god change my pain change my pain change my pain to laughter oh god in all my troubles give me double on this mountain in the mighty name of jesus christ as you pray that prayer so shall it be in the name of jesus christ for the lord almighty i thank you i give you all the glory i give you all the praise because you are worthy to be praised i celebrate your mighty name as we stand before your court i thank you because every legal right that satan have over your people presented here today lord god almighty the righteous judge oh jesus our advocate the legal aid the holy spirit have ordered us to come to your court today oh god let every accusation against anyone presented here today let that accusation of god be deleted by the reason of the blood of jesus christ because it is written that christ jesus took away all our iniquity he took away all our sin he took away all our rebellious attitude he took away our transgression and he nailed them to his cross he made an open shore of satan father let that scripture oh god be our defense in today prayer but as you look into the blood of jesus christ you will show compassion upon every life represented here today and revoke every legal right that satan has over the life of your people over the life of everyone presented here today revoke the legal rights of satan revoke the legal rights the legal claim of satan in the mighty name of jesus christ any blood that is crying against anyone here i pray mighty god let the blood of jesus christ silence that blood right now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth every altar family altar foundational altar that is speaking against the life of everyone here let the blood of Jesus silence that altar. Let the blood of Jesus.
continue to silence that foundation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God of my salvation, I also ask of God that you will put your restraining order against Satan and his demons that they will never touch this one anymore. That on this mountain, every blessing that you are going to distribute, oh God, as you are changing their story, as you are moving them from zero to hero, as you are changing their disappointment to appointment, or as you are changing their failure to success, God of my salvation, it shall be permanent. Everything that you do it, oh God, it is permanent, oh God. You say, let no man add to it, let no man subtract from it. You have done, oh God, this, you have changed their situation for men to give you glory. Put a restraining order against the demons of Satan that none of them will visit this one and snatch what they have taken away from this mountain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. Release your angels. Release your power into today's service. Release your angels. I welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. I welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. I submit to your authority, Holy Spirit. Let no man see me. Let everyone see you in action. Be the one, oh God, to do the preaching. Be the one to deliver your people. Be the one to send out your power to deliver your people. Let your angels, oh God, distribute the gift. Distribute, oh God, testimonies, oh God, to every life represented here today. Above all, let there be salvation. Above all, let there be revival. Above all, let there be revival. Let there be revival in the heart of your people. Arrest the heart of your people that they will cleave to you, oh Lord. They will serve you genuinely. This I ask in your name. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have not shared the program, please share the program as you do that. God bless you as you are sharing. As you are sharing, there are a lot of people that do not have notification and they are followers of the page. So as you are sharing Facebook, we use it as a, a means of alerting them. God bless you as you do that in Jesus' wonderful name. Today's topic, today topic, we are in the Easter season. We are talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. We are going to be using the blood of Jesus Christ to claim everything that, 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 that belongs to us. Because when Jesus Christ died, Jesus Christ gave us several, several blessings. But right now, when you look at the, the life of Christians, when you look at the life of the followers of Jesus Christ, most of these blessings are not reflecting in our lives. We are going to know the several blessings that Jesus Christ brought for us. How, we are, if those things are not present in our life, that means something is not right. We are supposed to be claiming or and living that kind of blessing. That is what we are going to talk about today. And the blood of the cross of Jesus is the supreme altar. The cross of Jesus is the supreme altar. Every other altar that came after Jesus Christ took their stand, took their stand because Jesus is the solid rock. And upon that solid rock, that is where we are standing. If I fire to light, for you to light your candle, you must first of all carry your candle and light it from where there is light. So Jesus Christ is the light that is lighting every other altar. So without Jesus, there is no fire in our altar. Jesus is the supreme altar. The cross of Jesus is the supreme altar. The what the altar, what the cross of Jesus means when Jesus was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. If you take the picture of the cross, you will see that the cross is like it's like it's like a plus sign one is going to the north one is going to the south one is going to the west and one is going to the east that is the sign of a cross what does that what does that sign tells us and jesus is in the middle of those those pointing arrows what is the sign of that cross it means that the nations of the earth from the north the south the east and west they should come God, Jesus Christ is summoning them to himself. That is what the cross is all about. Jesus at the middle and people in the north, south, west, and east. He died for the whole world. And summoning everyone, come and light your altar from me. So without Christ, we cannot stand. So the, uh, the cross of Jesus is the ultimate altar. The cross of Jesus is the ultimate altar. And the cross of Jesus cannot be, that message cannot be deleted from the world. The more they try to wipe out the message, the more that message 
message keep increasing. So we are going to look at the cross and the altar of Jesus Christ, the supreme altar. And that supreme altar is what we are going to use in our prayers today to collect that seven blessings that Jesus Christ died and paid for. We are collecting them this, this day. And as you believe, in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall go home with that seven mega blessings that every other blessing they are under these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every time, and uh, the title of our message today is that the blood of Jesus Christ triumph. The blood of Jesus Christ is our victory. The blood of Jesus Christ is our victory. Every time you are caught up in a sin, that person is under arrest in the spiritual realm. Anytime that you are caught up in stealing, anytime you are caught up in various sin, bloodshed, anytime you are caught up in scam, anytime you are caught up in womanizing, sleeping around prostitution, lies, anger, mildness, bad behavior, anytime you are caught up in such sin, sinful life, rebelling against God, complaining against God, anytime you are caught up in that very kind, in those kind of sin, such people are arrested in the spiritual realm. They have broken the spiritual law and they, they, they are not arrested in the spiritual realm. But you need a recognized authority to take you out of that prison. When people are arrested in the spiritual realm, that is when you see things go wrong. When people are arrested in the spiritual realm, things go wrong. Their freedom are limited. They cannot move to anywhere because they are locked up in a house. They are locked up in one place, house arrest, prison arrest, even in the prison. In the, even in the prisons, some prisons, some prisons that you see today, when you go, you cannot even stay there. It's, it's, it's smell. So inside of the prison that they are sick there. So anytime you see some smelly bad situation, know that something is wrong and such people are arrested and put in prison. They have broken the spiritual law. They are now in the prison in the spiritual realm. Satan, witches and wizards, they have no right to your life except you give them permission to do it. So instead of you praying against witches and wizards, altars of your father's house and mother's house, first of all, take care of what is giving them the right to do it. What is making them, what is making the spiritual law to lock such people in the prison? You have to think about it. And for me, I don't just take things so, so easy. When something happened in my life, and when it happened twice, I know that this is not ordinary. I have to check in the spirit. What have I done wrong? Where am I going wrong? What do I need to repair for this restoration to come back? Because if one, just imagine if one thing break out of this thing right now. In the next 10 days, another thing will get spoiled. In the next 10 days, another thing will get square. In the next 10 days, another thing will get square. That means within a month, this thing will not function anymore because one thing is broken out. If this thing, this roller here was to break out, in the next how many days, another thing will fall out. How many things, within a month, things will fall out and this thing will not, will not be functioning anymore. That is how the life of man is. When one thing is broken from man's life, another thing is bound to be broken. Before you know, the life of the person is breaking, broken, broken, broken to the extent that every of the blessing and inheritance that God has given to you, said that have taken everything away. So me, like for my example, like I said, is that when something is happening, when it happened once, I'm, I'm like, okay, it is what it is. But when it happened twice, it is caution. That means something is not right. Something cannot happen twice. The Bible said that out of two months, a matter is established. Out of two months, a matter is established. The Bible also said that we are two or three are gathered. God is there in our midst, right? So that means anything called two. It means that be caution. Something is happening. There is a force at work. But even if you not check and you not see that nothing is happening, but it is better to pray against something when it is twice, it is better for you to pray against that thing to stop immediately so that it will not extend to the third one because when it extends to the third one that means that is danger you don't want to experience the danger one so that for my own practical example that is what i use something don't happen to me two 
wives and we keep quiet. But a lot of us, we don't pay attention. Everything is falling apart and falling apart and falling apart. You keep quiet. Today, your job is gone. Tomorrow, they take your job document. Next, tomorrow, your business has landed in the water. The other day, they stole your phone. The other day, your shoe is missing. They keep taking things from people, taking things from people. And you are keeping quiet. At the end, you see that nothing, you have nothing anymore have nothing so so that is how it is in the spiritual realm when you when you are caught up with a sin such people are under arrest they arrest them in the spiritual realm and every of their things are put on hold but uh, we, we you need a superior authority you need a superior authority to get you out of that prison and what is that so who is that who is that who is that or what is that authority it is the blood of jesus christ the blood of Jesus Christ is the last card of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is the last card of God. So the blood of Jesus Christ is your guarantee to be buried. To be buried in the spiritual realm. You can call the name of Jesus Christ. They know that yes, at the name of Jesus Christ, we will bow. We will bow our knee at the name of Jesus Christ. But we will not release you. But when you call the blood, the blood is what bought you. So if the blood, if they hear the blood, the blood is the Passover. They cannot resist. You call the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee must bow. They will fall to their knees. But by the time you call the blood of Jesus, it will make them to get up quickly and open that prison door because that is the authority that they recognize in the spiritual realm to free any body of Christ that is under sin that know what they are doing. But if you don't know what you are doing, you will remain in that prison. That is why I said that in the principle, prayer, if you want to teach prayer, you cannot teach it all. Prayers have different things. How to address this, how to be free in the spiritual realm. And we all, we, we need to know that anytime we sin, there, 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 you have broken a spiritual law just as it is um, physically when you commit any crime physically they take you to prison spiritual law is that when you commit sin rebellion bad things that you that you think that you are enjoying you the person is arrested in the spiritual realm it will get to a point god is watching for you to come to the court of heaven to make a restitution and you are not coming a time will come everything will be put on hold that is why you see many i sometimes sometimes i pity for many of our nollywood actors and actresses how Death is so common with them because why they forget the things that they, they, they are in the world, but I don't know how they are taking care of their spiritual life. And these people are dying off, dying off, and dying off. They make the ones that even brought the name of Nollywood, they, they are no more, they are just you taking them and taking them. Yeah, but if you know your rights that I have I have seen, I have to visit the court of and that is how it is. They will leave you. God will be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. The day you are not coming, you are not coming anymore. The grace will be withdrawn. If the grace has stopped, see, the grace is given to us, but that does not give us the privilege to misuse the grace. If you are a kind of person, God has won you and won you, and you think that grace is abound, grace is abound, and you now continue to do it so that grace will speak for you, the Lord will disappoint you someday. So we don't want, we don't want to get to the place where, where the Lord will disappoint us because, because you have abused the grace several times. So all we need to do when things are falling apart, you notice it this month, something is not right. Next month, something is not right. Sit down and begin to search in the spirit realm. Holy Spirit, I am arrested. I am arrested in the spiritual realm. What is my offense? Reveal them to me. What is my offense? I want to make restitution so that I can be bailed out of that prison through the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you do not search in the spirit and ask the Holy Spirit of God, that person will remain in that prison and the blood of Jesus Christ will never speak because it is the place of you making research and knowing that I have wronged God. I need to go and make restitution. That is where the Spirit of God will pump you to use the blood. And the blood of Jesus is the higher authority that will burn such individuals from the prison. It is a deep teaching. So God has nothing extra to offer us. 
The last thing God had to offer us was his son, offered on the cross of Calvary. That is the last thing God had to offer you. So if you cannot make use of the great sacrifice offered on the cross of Calvary, the lamp of God, and use his authority to bear yourself out of spiritual realm, out of the spiritual realm, that such people will remain in prison. And all the money that you think that you are enjoying, the person is enjoying, it gets to a point. That is why I use the Nollywood as an example. That it will get to a point, all the money, you start using them for hospital. And if the money will not be even enough, you start begging the public to come and pay for the hospital bill. We don't want to do that. Let the life of people, let the life of people give you teaching, give you wisdom. We don't want to get to that place and get and get and get. And when it is 60, when you are supposed to relax, that is when you start spending all the money that you have. That is why I said yesterday that it is not about taking hours. It is not about walking without, without creating your altar. If you don't want to get to 60 and this thing and sickness, we start taking those money away. You don't want to get to that. You don't want to do it. That is why I said a life starts at 40. If your life, if the person's life starts at 40 and you're not making use of it, you are still a nuisance. From 60, that is why you see most of them out of 100% or 60 years old and 55 years old. Out of 100%, you see. 16% spending money on sickness, 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 because why? The, the money that they have accumulated and think that they have got that they are not using it for sickness. With the Bible said that even at old age, we bear fruit. Even at old age, we will bear fruit. So if you are 50 something or 60 something, you already carry sickness. It means that you failed in your 40. It means that the assignment given to you, you failed. It means that your altar that was supposed to be set up to connect to Christ, you failed in that aspect. That is why you see that from 55, 60 years, you see them having stroke, heart attack, different sickness, terrible sickness, unexplainable sickness from 55 to 60. We don't want to get to that because why? Their kids have been piled up in the spiritual realm. They have been locked up in the prison and they are not going to go to make restitution. They just think that life is good. But at, at 60, when their bone is weak, that is when they start looking for God. I don't want to do that. God forbid. I don't want to experience that. I don't. There's one thing I told God. I said, God, don't ever add the day that I will turn my back on you. Don't add it to my life. Mm -mm. The day I will turn my back on you and say that uh, the word is not sweet, then I'm not forgetting you, my God. Because I don't want to seek like the way people are getting sick at old age. So instead of that, God, don't let those days add to my life. Tell me, teach me what to do at this young age that my blood is still vibrant. Let me invest in your kingdom so that the blood will always speak for me. We have the prodigal sons. We have the prodigal daughters who will serve God a little bit and they will take off. When trouble hits them, they will come back again. When they eat, they will run again at 60. 60 is a terrible age. 60 is a blessing age. And 60 above is also a terrible moment for everybody's life. If you don't pay attention to 60, 40 or something is when you are training people. But at 60 is when you are getting return, when you are supposed to be getting return from all your works. So 60 is not when you are supposed to be using the money or your return to be treating sickness. It is an abomination. It is an abomination. So anytime we sing, the people are locked up in the spiritual realm. There are young people that, that, that they are not even up to 60. They are not even up to 40 yet. But they are locked up in the spiritual realm. Because why? They have sinned, they sinned, they sinned. They, do, they, they, they have broken the altar of God several times. The supreme altar of God that he died, they broke his, they, 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 they killed him because of us. Some people are still carrying their knife to stab that same body. They are still stabbing that body on the cross. The body has suffered enough. The body of Jesus Christ has suffered enough for us. Why can't that body just rest? But some people, through sin, through rebellion, through nonsense things that they are doing, they are still stabbing the body to make sure that the body is 
species and they are locked up in the spiritual realm. A body that you are stabbing through sin, how can you not use the authority of that body to bear you out in the spiritual realm? It will not answer. It will not answer. So the blood of Jesus Christ is the last card that Jesus, God has provided for us. If we cannot take care of that blood and use it to bail ourselves out, there's nothing God can offer us. After the fall of Adam, the, the doorway in which God used in coming to communicate with man was closed. There was an altar that God, Adam, God and Adam have. It is a doorway. God comes visit adam talk to adam the Eden was a was was a was something that had the picture of heaven garden of Eden is the picture of heaven adam was living in heaven that's so a lot of us here you were living in heaven your business was just flourishing and flourishing and flourishing you were receiving good uh, unmerited favor blessing everywhere but when they ask you now where are those blessings where are those finances? Some of you here, you have been a very rich woman. Rich woman, rich man, rich dude. But right now, the money, everything fear is you don't know where they went to. The garden was in your house. The garden was in your hand. You, your, your, your womb was so fruitful that you were bearing children. But when sins of abortion came, they drove you out of fruitfulness. Now the womb is locked. Some of you, you used to see men coming into your life. I want to marry you. I want to settle down with you. And because of sin of flirting around, sins of uh, sleeping around with men, that the, the, the God have drove you out of that, that oil that was on your head that anybody that see you, they just want to marry you. But right now, nobody's looking at you anymore. The door, they shake you out of it. Now you are the one begging for man to come. You are the one begging for woman to settle down with you. Before your business used to be good. But because of the sin of you stealing extra. When people are selling one dollar, you are selling five dollar. God himself looked at it as a sin and drove you out of Eden. Now the business is locked. Now the business is locked and such people are arrested in the spiritual realm. That is why we have the court of heaven. God is always merciful. That is why we go there to plead for mercy. God, let the blood of Jesus bear me out of that prison. I am ready to make a change. So after the fall of Adam, the door in which God used in communicating with man was shut down. God no more come anymore. After the blood of uh, after the blood was introduced, so we are talking about the power of the blood. The power of the blood. <clears throat> so in your prayers today, you are going to use the blood to bear yourself out of any prison. You are the one that know what you are experiencing. You are the one that know what is not right in your life. Whatever thing that is not right, that means there is a spiritual law speaking in the spiritual realm and we are using the blood of Jesus to bail ourselves out of that evil prison. Satan we submit because of the blood today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaking from the book of Exodus 12, the Bible said that after the introduction of the blood in the Old Testament, in the time of Moses and Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh and Moses, they were contending, let my people go. Pharaoh will say yes, I will let them go. Tomorrow Pharaoh will change his mind. But when Pharaoh, when God showed blood in the new, in the Old Testament, Pharaoh did not hesitate. He told them to come and leave. So that is why I said that the blood of Jesus Christ is the last card. When they see the blood, everybody must pass over. When God killed the first sons, the first children of Egypt, blood the spirit of death was moving around claiming blood but when and when moses and the israelites when they put the blood at their doorpost the spirit of death passed over so that is why i said by the inspiration of the holy spirit that the blood of jesus christ is the last card that god has sacrificed when they see the blood it makes the enemy to pass over such people but we must not abuse the blood not because the blood is speaking for us tomorrow you go and do something and use the blood 
They keep putting you in that prison. You call the blood, they, they, they bring you out. So when man was saved by accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, they have entered a covenant with God. The day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you entered a covenant with God. It makes you to have a supreme altar. Even if your altar is not hot enough, the supreme altar, which is the altar of Jesus Christ, now speaks for everyone. So if your altar is not hot enough, you call the altar of the you call the altar of God. Let the blood of Jesus light my altar. Let the blood of Jesus light my altar. I am just too weak. I am too weak. I don't know what is going on that I cannot get up to pray. Blood of Jesus light up my altar. So the blood of Jesus is the supreme altar above any other altar that we will ever introduce. They have been having altar in the Old Testament, but none of their altar could save them. It was only when Jesus came and became a lamb to us that is when the, the that altar became a supreme altar, and everyone that called on His name will now be saved. So the day you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the blood of Jesus Christ is now your stronghold. The blood of Jesus Christ, you now enter a covenant with the Lord Almighty. Today we are going to see now that what is in the blood of Jesus Christ? Every time you speak of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are bringing the life of God. Every time you speak of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are bringing the life of God into that situation. So your expectation, your expectation, like people that are experiencing delay and disappointment, that very thing that you are experiencing delay and disappointment, you put it, take anything that you feel in your mind that you just, you just want the Holy Spirit to use it as a point of contact. Sprinkle it that this, in the name of Jesus, with my faith, I sprinkle this thing as a blood. Oh, Jesus, you must speak into this situation. The blood of Jesus speaks better than the blood of Abel. But perhaps you are not used to using points of contact. What do you not do? You use your own mouth that this very thing, I call the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is our stronghold. It is our stronghold. The blood of Jesus Christ is our stronghold. It is what we hold on to and we never fall. Any other thing that you will hold, apart from the name of Jesus Christ, you will surely fall. The name of Jesus is what makes the enemy to bow. But the blood of Jesus is the stronghold of every man. That is your defense. Even when you go to the court of God and Satan is accusing you, the blood of Jesus is what justifies you because the blood, the Bible said according to the book of Leviticus 17 verses 11 that the life of a, the life of a man is in the blood. The life of every man is in the blood. Our life is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Our life is in the blood of Jesus Christ. So all things are possible because of the blood. If nothing is working, carry that expectation. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you. If any force that is holding that thing, keep calling the blood of Jesus Christ on that, on that thing until you see result. Any force that is holding you in the spiritual realm, holding that expectation will live by force. Because the Bible said that Jesus Christ made an open show, open show of Satan when he died. So the blood of Jesus Christ is our defense. The blood of Jesus Christ is our stronghold. So when you call on the blood of Jesus Christ, you are calling the life of God into that situation, a situation that is dead. So when you are calling the blood of Jesus Christ, you are calling the life of God into that very situation to come and speak in that very situation. Every time you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you have just turned the switch of heaven on. It is like you and you are in a dark, a dark place and you go to somewhere and on the light. That is how it is. In, 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 in the kingdom of God, when you call the blood of Jesus Christ, it turns on the switch of heaven that light is calling. Someone is calling from heaven. That is how powerful the blood of Jesus is. They don't play with the blood of Jesus in the kingdom of God. The blood of Jesus, let me give you one revelation that I got from a man that wrote the court of heaven. He said that anytime that you are summoned in the court, he said try and have your imagination that you are standing before a judge. And Satan is accusing you, your accuser is standing somewhere. 
and God is sitting at a table. He said, just he said, try and imagine, try and picture that. If God is sitting at my front directly like this, anything that is facing God is the blood. So if God wants to pass judgment, he sees the blood. If, like, if, if, like, for example, if I want to get some things this year, I will write the things and put it in my doorway, my door room, yeah? So that when I'm coming out of the room, when I'm coming out, I will see that thing at the door. When I lie down, I will see that thing at the door. And whatever the, the, the expectation, what I want to do this year, since it's at my doorpost and I'm seeing it all the time, it will remind me of what I want to do, what I want to achieve this year. So the same thing, you can put it in your silly. When you lie down, you are seeing the expectation that this is what I want to achieve this year. It will remind you to keep playing in your head that you must achieve this thing this year that is how a lot of people are getting things done that is how they taught us in the in the in the military that if you want your goal if you want to achieve your goal in every year write them put them at your doorway as you are coming out you are seeing them so even though you forget some day one thing will remind you that the year is going you said you want to achieve this thing you have not achieved it it will keep reminding you if you don't put it in your doorway Put it in your ceiling where you lie down as you wake up, you are seeing paper. You must know that you have written what you want to do this year. Then. So the same thing, it applies with God. So anytime Satan summons the children of God to the court of heaven, the blood is always at the front of God. You cannot just pass any hard judgment because Satan is an idiot. God, the, the, Jesus is standing at the corner and saying that God, Remember the covenant that both of us have. That if I go to the world, if I did not fail, like if I do not fail like Adam, everyone that call upon my name will be saved. According to the book of Romans 10, 13. And when God see the blood, he will pass, he will say, pass over. Pass over this one, Satan. I rebuke you from this one because why? The blood of Jesus Christ have bought this one. So, Many of us will not call the name Jesus, the name Jesus, but the last card, the blood, must be used. Yeah? So the last card, the blood of Jesus Christ, must be used. The blood of Jesus Christ is what is what turned the switch of heaven on, and it is our Passover. Making Satan to know, making demons to know, making authorities that are holding what you are expecting to know that pass over this one, give this one what belongs to this one because this one is a no go, is a no touch. My seal, this one carry a higher authority. The blood of Jesus Christ is upon this one. Let no man trouble this one. So that is how it is. So in the book of Zechariah 9, book of Zechariah 9, 11 to 12, the Bible said that as for you, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare into your life that as for you, by the blood of the covenant of the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Almighty has sent you out of that prison. That whatever prison that you are, and in the name of Jesus Christ, just as Elijah spoke from the book of Deuteronomy, and no rain came into this world, I speak from the book of Zechariah 9, from 11 to 12, consigning your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that as for you, as for you, by the blood covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord Almighty has sent you out of that prison in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever prison that you are, the Lord Almighty Mighty have sent you out now today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord Almighty is your stronghold. You are not a prisoner of hope, not a prisoner of darkness. You are a prisoner of goodness, not a prisoner of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What that place is telling us is that we have received double. For every punishment that you are going through, the blood coming out of Jesus Christ, today you are receiving double, double, double of that expectation that you are looking for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever thing the enemy has taken away from you, double. This is our day of restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus went to the cross and died and resurrected, everybody's life that is considered dead 
in the spiritual realm that, that bones are not eating. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are resurrected and restoration have come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So anytime we turn our eyes away from our stronghold, anytime we turn our eyes away from God, anytime we turn our eyes away from the living blood of Jesus Christ, what now happened? We now experience weak hold. We experience weakness. For the Bible said, according to the book of 1 Samuel 2, verses 19, the Lord, he said, he said, by strength shall no man prevail. So you cannot succeed without God. I don't know how people are doing it. Maybe they have another God somewhere, but you cannot succeed without God. Jesus clearly told us as a follower of Christ, according to the book of John 15, verses 5, Jesus said that he is the vine and we are the branches. He said, he that stands with him, those that stands with the Lord Almighty, he said that we bear much fruit, that we bear much fruit and without him, none of us can live. So I don't know how people are living without Christ and they are still getting blessed. I don't think that it is the Jesus that I know. It is not. You are living in the world, living all crazy and you are getting blessed. I don't think that you are serving the Jesus that I know because Jesus Christ said that without him, we can't do nothing for he is the vine. The vine is like the main tree and every other branches that is us so any branch that break out of jesus and say that i'm going to serve another god i don't want this your jesus i'm serving another god you are not part of jesus you may enjoy everything of this world but on the last day you will be cast away just imagine a tree when a branch fall out of a tree what happened to that branch they use it as a firewood that is how a lot of life is going to be on the last day. So, if problem and situation of life have moved you from God, we need to come back. If problems of life, situation have made you to run to fake prophets and different places to seek for help, you need to come back to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you need to come back to God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Situation of life has made a lot of people to go and do Yahoo. A lot of people, they are into business of scam because of situation. A lot of people are doing prostitution right now because of what situation. A lot of people are desperate to get married. So what they do is that they test this man, test this woman, test this one, test this one. And everyone is dumping you. No one is taking you serious. Least they will tell you at last to go and abort the baby that you have for them. So why not just sit with God and wait for God to give you what you are looking for you are not the first person that have gone through that situation there are a lot of people that have gone through situation that is worse than your own but they still stood with god and said that god i am not leaving you alone so yours is not the first one situation of life is hitting everyone hard so for you to not see your situation i said i've been single i am not 26 years old i am not 30 years old no man is coming so i'm going to go to the coffee shop they advised me a long time ago like that that's okay you know that you are get it to 32 now you are getting to this now you all you need to do just go to a coffee shop because you you don't even know how to attract man all you are doing is just uh, the church and this and that 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 so go and get a coffee just behave as if you go to the coffee shop just sit down and be here and be drinking coffee and when somebody will just come or go to the beer parlor but uh, they were advising me nonsense things nonsense making my heart to think that your age is running over the you need to hurry up now and marry that is how a lot of people are today they they they, they, they think that they are due uh, their heart is beating and beating and beating and beating so all they are doing they are trying every dick and hurry they go to the coffee shop just buy coffee and you are just in wear some kind of useless shirt your nipple is showing to attract somebody to you and uh, uh you go to the beer parlor just behave as if you are buying pepper soup just behave you are buying just ordinary month they keep advising me that we know that you don't drink beer you don't drink alcohol just just go to the coffee shop you will see a good man but i never took that kind of advice because it is not for me i'm not even uh, i don't even know how to do attractive things to people i don't so 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 there are a lot of people because of situation you are just misbehaving misbehaving anyhow a lot of people have gone through your situation they, they, they stood with god and said that either god give me or i 
they will stay like this. Those are desperate faith. Those are people that God is looking for that. Until God answer me, I am not, I am not leaving this place. Just like Jacob. Jacob said that I will not let you go except you answer me. I will not let you go except you change my name. I will not let you go except you change my story. There are people that have gone through that situation that you are. Whether you are buried, there are people that have been buried for 20 something years. They still say that if God do not give me children, I am not going to idol or fake prophet or do anything. If God do not give me any husband, I am not going to fake prophet or go and buff myself and be enticing men or enticing women just to marry me. I will stand with God until God speak. Even if I don't have job, I am not doing scam. The Lord will still provide food for me. Even as much I am eating, one day, the Lord Almighty will change my name from sorrow to success. And everything I have lost, the Lord will restore them. That is the people that God is looking for. When God tests some people, when God uses some situation to test some people for a while, a lot of us are just failing. God wanna give you the blessing, but Satan will just come like Job, accusing you and say that like this one I have lost spirit, seducing people with eyes and nipples, seducing people anyhow. That is just try this person if, if this person will not fall. God will not tell Satan to go and tempt those people. And those people look at you, look at your blessing here. Satan will just come close to your blessing and tempt you, and you will just fall. And God will withdraw that thing. You will suffer again for 10 years and be waiting for 10 years. That is how a lot of people are. Something is close to them. Satan will just come and say that I know the, uh, the mother of this person did the same thing. The father of this person did the same thing. Let me just try this person with what the father did, what the mother did. You see that that person will fall. And really, because you are not strong in your prayer, because you are the Jesus Christ said that pray without ceasing. Just because you are not strong, you are not strong in your altar prayer, you will fall into that certain temptation and God will just withhold that thing. You will start struggling again. Satan is giving you five, five naira, five, five dollar every day. But the billions that God wants to give to you, God is holding it. That's how a lot of people like that. So whatever thing God give me now, I am satisfied. But I know the God that I have, when he want to return back to me, he will give me in double. The Bible said that after Anna prayed that prayer, God gave him uh, gave him somewhere. God did not stop there. I think God gave him extra six children or five children added. Added. Six children added. I'll be five children added to somewhere. So when God, when you are asking God something, God is delaying you. God is not foolish. God is not foolish to say that this person have wasted time, wasted years. He will repay. He will repay every year that you have wasted. So instead of you hurrying or having useless children that will be beating you, cursing you, stabbing you, killing people, making you to go to go to hospital, making you to go to police station anyhow, and you now wait for God and God not give you a sound one that will become president tomorrow. Why can't I just wait and have the one that will become president or a great man of God tomorrow? That will have the one that will be taking me to hospital every day, taking me to prison every day, causing trouble outside, killing people outside. Why will I have such children? Why won't I just wait for God? That's why a lot of people are, you have rushed into marriage. Now the marriage is all about beating you, cursing you, fighting you because you refuse to wait. So, so whatever thing that you have, that you are going through, a lot of people have gone through it. So there is no excuse that I am suffering. That is why I went to do it. There is no excuse, sir. There is no excuse. Don't let death meet you. Don't let death meet you with that kind of sinful life because you cannot go to heaven and go and tell God that this is the reason why I'm doing that. There's no excuse in such thing. People have done that. People have gone through that thing and they still stood with God. So withdraw from that thing. So anytime we are doing such things, it makes the blood, it makes such people to, to be locked up in the spiritual realm and the time we come, all the all the enjoyment, you, are, you start suffering for it again. There's no good life in those such things. Why can't I just wait? for God. So, the blood of Jesus Christ is our rescue. The blood of Jesus Christ is our rescue. Outside of the
blood of Jesus Christ, you are running a risk. After, if the blood of Jesus Christ is not there, you are running a risk. So let the blood of Jesus continue to speak. You wake up in the morning. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into my day. Let the blood speak for me all throughout this day. Let the blood speak for me at my job. The blood of Jesus Christ is your last card. It scares Satan away. Now let's now look at the benefits. What are the seven benefits that we're going to use in praying today? What are the seven seals, the seven seals of blessing that the blood of Jesus Christ brought for us? The seven seal of blessing that the Lord Almighty brought for us. The Bible said, according to the book of Revelation 5, from 7 to 12, Jesus Christ was slain for us to be redeemed, for us, for, for he redeemed us back to God by his blood. He bought us so that we can have power, 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 power. It's one thing that God gave to us. So if you are somebody that is always weak, you are weak to do everything, that means something is wrong in the spiritual realm. There is a spiritual law against you that is making you to be weak, making you to seek. There's a spiritual law somewhere. God does not bring sickness. God does not punish us with sickness. But when a spiritual law is in place, it gives Satan the right to come into such people's life and put different sickness and punishment upon such people. So, so, the Bible scripture is Revelation 5 from 9 to 12. Revelation 5 from 9 to 12. You will see all these benefits there. Jesus Christ died to bring us power. So sick, be sick and be weak is an abomination. We don't need it. That is not our portion. So anytime you feel it, those kind of things, you plead the blood of Jesus, call the blood of Jesus Christ in that area. The blood of Jesus Christ is your is the authority to bear you out of such situ situation. So the blood of Jesus Christ also bring brought us riches. So people that are against that, we, you cannot be rich. You, Jesus Christ was not rich. No, Jesus Christ already have those things. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus already have such things, uh, all these things that I'm naming right now. He, he do not need them, but he bought them for us. Riches is one of the things Jesus Christ bought for you. So if you are in a ministry where they don't believe in prosperity, sir, you are under bondage. You are under bondage. Because according to the book of Revelation 5, 9 to 12, Jesus Christ died to bring us power to bring us riches, to bring us wisdom, to bring us strength, to bring us honor, to bring us glory, and to bring us blessing. So if all these seven things are missing in one's life, it means that there is a spiritual law that is speaking against such person, and you need to make restitution in that area to get all these blessings back. Power. You cannot be weak. Sickness is not supposed to. We know that there are some food you eat, you get some allergy. There are some things, and there are some uh, hereditary sickness that you get from family. Those are causes. They're not supposed to be there. Sickness that your father sick, you as you yourself, you still have the sickness. Those are causes. It's not supposed to be in your life because when Jesus Christ died, he took all those things. So where is all these things coming from? These things came because why? Those such people are in the prison. In the prison so so when these things are not reflecting in your life you need to visit the court of heaven to go and get those things back because it is your inheritance power you are supposed to get power when you speak satan is supposed to listen when you speak in any place you're not supposed to be oppressed there are people that are going through oppression upon oppression whether they go in the public they cannot speak out they they, they oppress them anyhow that was my life before. They keep oppressing me and oppressing me. That was my life. Oppression life. You cannot speak. You are speaking and then you keep quiet. Shut up. Who are you? So, power. Riches. Poverty is not support. Your hand is so dry. Hand so dry. Account so dry. No, that is a cause. That is a cause. You cannot pay rent. You can you don't you cannot feed yourself very well. It is a cost, and you need to go and make restitution because such people have been arrested in the spiritual realm. 
and they need restitution with God by going to the court of heaven and quoting the scripture that I know that from the book of Revelation, from the book of Revelation 5, 9 to 12, you died, Jesus Christ, to give me words. You died to give me power. You died to give me strength. I am not supposed to be sick. You died to give me honor. I'm not supposed to be experiencing shame and disgrace. You died to give me glory. I'm not supposed to be living the life of darkness that where I go, I'm not even recognized. I'm like nobody. I am a slave among slaves. You died to give me blessings, but I'm not seeing any blessing in the work of my hand. My document is locked up. My blessing, my my business blessing is locked up. Fruit of my womb is locked up. Everything about me is locked up. I'm not seeing any blessing. Those are the things you carry to the court of heaven and say that I want this thing to be released. And God will not say that Satan have accusation. That is when you start checking yourself. What area? What have you done? What, what kind of the things? Holy Spirit, reveal to me some people right now their children are so sick every year every month your children are sick there's no blessing there no blessing that is no blessing that is not the will of god is there any that you cannot tell me that that little child just sinned it is you or the father that have sinned that child did not sin it is you or the father either the woman or the man is the one that sinned that made spiritual law to be against that child. Now, what do you not do? They take away your peace. You keep running to the hospital. You keep sitting down. The time that you used to go to work at market, you are pampering that child, wasting your time, wasting your years, wasting finances. Because why? You are locked up in the spiritual realm and they are giving you punishment that is have, that, that have extended to your children. So the blood of Jesus Christ is what justify you. You go to God first and tell God that my child is always sick. I don't know if it is me or my husband is the one that committed this crime. But let the blood of Jesus Christ justify me at this court. The blood of Jesus Christ is the last card, my stronghold. And that is why I've come for that blood of Jesus, for, for, for you to give me that authority for Satan to release me from that prison. My child cannot be locked up. Yeah. So when we when we are living our life, we are not seeing all those things. We are not seeing the blessing. We are not seeing power. We are weak sickness and all that. You are not seeing riches in your life. You are not seeing wisdom. You are so dull. You go to school, no wisdom. And even if you read, the moment you get to class, everything fly out. That is not supposed to be so. Jesus Christ died for us to have wisdom. Wisdom is supposed to be our portion. Foolish talk is not supposed to be in our mouth. We are supposed to be speaking wisdom. Wisdom. Because that is what Jesus Christ died for. So if you are still speaking foolish words, words that can make people to go and die, that means a spiritual law is against you. Your mouth cannot speak blessing. And such people, if you see that they are so ugly, if you see people that speak nonsense word a lot, look at them. They are ugly, ugly people. Ugly. So we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want a spiritual law to hold us. So I, I just named seven, seven things that you can go and claim on this fasting. God, these things must be present in my life because if power is in my life, that means I will have dominion in everything I put my hand. In business, there will be power that will power my business. In my document, there will be power behind my document that will make them that will make them not to reject me. Everything. That means I cannot be poor and I, job can, job must be my portion. If I'm looking for job, I, I cannot, they cannot deny me of job because Jesus died for this thing. Those are the seven blessings that you need to be confessing that God, you died for this thing, but I'm not seeing all this thing in my life it means that there is a spiritual law against me i am going to the court of heaven to make restitution with god for legal right to be taken away from satan and for all these blessings to be released to me we are going to go into into prayer now we are going to go into prayer shortly we are in easter season where we are going to make use of the blood but it shouldn't be that the Easter, because of the Easter, that is why we are making use of the blood. There is no glory in suffering. Disease is brutal. There is no glory in suffering. It makes people to become slaves. It makes those that, those that you are older than, you start calling them auntie. 
Auntie, please, can you help me with 10,000? Mama, can you please help me with this? It makes elder people to become slaves. When there is suffering, too many suffering, it makes people to become slaves to their younger ones. There's no more happiness. There's no more happiness. Sickness will be, be sickness because of thinking and depression. Sickness and disease will not come. So I want to tell you today that everything about healing, today's service is all about healing and restoration. But the healing is not just our body. Your expectation, if your expectation is sick, you cannot receive good news. So anytime anyone is teaching about healing, don't just center the healing to the organs of your body that I am sick, that is why. No, some people's destiny are sick. If destiny is sick, you need healing. If your document is sick, they are rejecting you, rejecting you. It means that that document is sick. If they keep rejecting it, rejecting you in your visa, that visa is sick. If your body keep paining you and all that, you keep having some kind of sickness, yes, you are definitely sick. Then if your business is not moving forward, that business is sick. If you have passed the age of man getting married and no man is coming, that means your marital settled life is sick. If you are in a marriage and you don't have peace, all you see is fighting and everything, quarreling. There is no week that you and your husband or you and your wife will not argue. Or there is no month that you and your wife and your husband will not argue. That marriage is sick. So whatever thing that is not moving forward smoothly in your life, that thing is considered a, 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 a sickness before God. And we need healing. We need restoration. We also need restoration. Yeah? And there are people that have ratchets in their body and these ratchets are turning to sore. You scratch them, sore will gush out. You sleep. Your sleep is sick. You cannot sleep straight. Those things are sickness. So people have multiple, multiple a multiple fibro. You keep going to the hospital for operation every year. Painful ear, ear pain, stroke, stroke, all these things, cancer. It means that these things, the body is sick. So, and that is why we are coming to God because disease and sickness, they are not part of us. God, Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ died, He did not put those things as part of our inheritance, it is not our portion. So if life is not moving forward, what must I do? That is one first question you need to ask when you are passing through a situation. What must I do to get out of this situation? Make your brain sweat. First rule, search. What, what are the areas that I need to repair? What are the areas that I am lacking that have made me to be experiencing this thing? Am I experiencing this thing for the past how many months now? Or is it just once and it left? And it did not come again. When something is more than two, you need to pay attention to that thing. You need to search where, what have I done wrong? And what must I do to fix this thing? Definitely the Holy Spirit, if you are keeping track of your life, the Holy Spirit will trigger you immediately the last week. You open a door to something. But where people does not, where people do not remember is that they keep piling up the things. And when they fall into that situation, by the time they run to God, they cannot even remember where they have ended. That is why I told you people yesterday that every week I conduct deliverance for myself because I want to keep the house clean so that anytime I fall into something, something happens, God forbid, that I can quickly remember that maybe that is what I did last week or something happened or I did this one. It can quickly go, but when the things are piled up, you cannot even figure out what you did that is making you to experience this kind of suffering. And since you don't know, you cannot know, you don't know what to go and present at the court of heaven to confess and to make restitution with God. So we need to clear the house every week by the principle that I gave you yesterday. The Lord Almighty is our strength. Today, program is restoration and restoration. Things that was taken away from our hand will be restored back to us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to go into prayer shortly right now. We have six prayers, 10 minutes for your prayer expectation. Then I will not declare and pray upon the water. If you don't have your water, please get your water ready. But if you don't feel like using the water, there's no problem. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord Almighty will see answer your prayers. And if you have not shared the program, please share the program and be a blessing to someone else in Jesus' name. Let's pray prayer number one. Prayer number 
number one you are going to pray you are going to pray prayer number one i take authority in the mighty name of jesus christ and i render every evil authority that is working against my settlement that is working against my expectation and name that expectation that very expectation that you have brought to this mountain make sure you name that expectation as you are praying this prayer that i take authority in the mighty name of jesus christ i render every evil authority that is working against my settlement and my expectation i invoke the blood of jesus Christ against such authority because as they hear the blood if that authority hear the blood they must pass you over that is why you are praying this prayer right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ if someone will pray that prayer right now pray that prayer in the next two minutes that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I take authority I take authority over and Every, every, I take authority. I take authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I render every evil authority that is working against my settlement and my expectation. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying that prayer right now? Is someone praying that prayer for your own deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? For the Bible speaking according to the book of Luke 10, verses 19, it said, Behold, Jesus Christ, behold. Lord, I have given you authority to trap upon serpents, to trap upon snakes, to trap upon scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by no means hurt you. Now take that authority, take this word of God, according to the book of Luke 10, verses 19, begin to declare that authority that is in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Declare that authority that I render every evil authority that is working against my settlement that is working against my expectation i invoke the blood of jesus christ against such authority right now let the blood of jesus christ answer for me let the blood of jesus christ answer for me in this my situation I begin to name that situation name that settlement that thing that you want god to settle for you that thing that you want god to solve for you that expectation begin to call on the blood of jesus christ call on the blood call on the blood of jesus christ on that situation right now that you take authority in the mighty name of jesus christ you render every authority every evil authority that is working against your settlement that is working against this your expectation you invoke the blood of jesus christ against such authority in the mighty name of jesus christ as you pray that prayer may the lord grant your request in the name of jesus christ prayer number two You are going to pray this prayer. There are people that are experiencing moving objects. You are experiencing moving objects in your body. Some, some of you are experiencing fibro. Some of you are experiencing severe headache. Some of you are experiencing ringing in your ears and water coming out of your ears. Some of you are experiencing pain, different pain in your body and in your stomach. You are going to pray this prayer that every arrows are arrows of wickedness fired into my destiny. Arrows of wickedness fired into my organs. Arrows of wickedness fired into my life, causing me delays, causing me disappointment, causing me fear, causing me weakness of the body, causing me sickness, causing me poverty, causing me shame, causing me disgrace and hatred. I fire back that evil arrow back to sender in the name of Jesus Christ. I fire that evil arrow back to sender in the name of Jesus. I fire back that evil arrow to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ. Back to sender and I take my covering in the blood of Jesus Christ. And someone praying that prayer for the Bible said that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Your life is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to fire back every arrow of wickedness. Fired into your destiny. Every arrow of wickedness. Fired into your expectation. Every arrow of wickedness. Fired against you. Your, your, your marital settlement. Every arrow of darkness. Fired into your organs. Every arrow of wickedness. Fired against you. You return them 
back in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to fire out that arrow. That in the name of Jesus Christ, that arrow come out of my head. That arrow come out of my business. That arrow come out of my body. That arrow come out of the work of my hands. That arrow come out of my job. That arrow come out from my children and return back to sender. Return back to sender. My life is in the blood of Jesus. My life is in the blood of Jesus. I take covering in the blood of Jesus Christ. I take covering in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is your defense. If someone pray this prayer so aggressively, and when, when you are using the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't pray gentleman prayer. It is the spiritual warfare. It is a spiritual warfare. And in the name of Jesus, begin to speak out your faith with bold declaration that every arrows of wickedness fired into my destiny, every arrows of wickedness fired into my organs, every arrows of wickedness fired into my head, every arrows of wickedness fired into my business, fired into the work of my hands, fired into my documents, fired into my life that is causing me delays, that is causing me fear, that is causing me disappointment, that is causing me weakness of the body, that is causing me sickness, that is causing me poverty, shame and disgrace and hatred. I return that arrow back to send that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus name. Prayer number three, you are going to pray. That in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against gates of wickedness, gates of darkness, spiritual prison that has locked my God-given breakthroughs and my soul. Be chartered now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare my liberty be established. I declare my liberty be established. Be, 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 begin to invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against the gates of darkness. Every gate of darkness, every spiritual prison that has locked my God-given breakthroughs and my soul. Be chartered right now. Be chartered. Be scattered right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare my freedom. I declare my liberty be established now. I declare my freedom. I declare, I declare my freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare my liberty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare my freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying that prayer? Is someone praying that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ? For the Bible speaking according to the book of Psalm 119 verses 45, the Bible said that I will walk about in freedom for I have sought out your precepts. The Lord Almighty give you freedom as you are declaring and invoking the blood of Jesus Christ. Receive your liberty. Receive your freedom. Receive your liberty. Receive your freedom from that gate of darkness, from that spiritual prison that have locked lock down your breakthrough receive your freedom in the name of jesus christ as you are hearing the sound of my voice i prophesy the book of psalm 119 verses 45 into your life you will walk out in freedom for you have sought God's precepts, you will walk out in freedom. I declare Psalm 11945 into your breakthroughs, into your expectation. I call your soul out of that prison. I call you out of that prison in the name of Jesus Christ. You are bailed and discharged and acquainted by the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are bailed from that uh, situation, that painful situation. You are bailed from that painful situation by the power power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, your God-given breakthrough return to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, and I declare your liberty be established now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to cry out to God. Your expectation, make sure you hold your expectation. If you know that what you are looking for, you are desperate. All that expectation in your hand. If they have given you papers to drive you out of that country, carry anything that represents your business. Carry anything that is representing what you are looking for. Your prayers, your prayer requests, carry the paper and begin to call on the name Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ.
Christ. Heal this thing that I'm holding right now. Heal me from anything called sick in my body and in my expectation. Make sure you hold your expectation and begin to call Jehovah Rapha because that is his name. His name is called Jehovah Rapha, God our healer. Make sure you hold your expectation. I am giving you two minutes for you to pray that prayer right now. Hold your expectation. Begin to wave it to heaven. Hold that passport. Hold that visa or whatever thing that you are asking God for. That business point of contact. Your children's name. Your, your school document. Your visa document. Whatever thing that you are looking for. Hold that thing and raise it to the heavens. And begin to call Jehovah Rapha. Begin to address God according to his personality. That by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ. Heal me from anything called sick. Heal me from anything cause sick in this my expectation heal me mighty god heal anything cause sick in my expectation i need your healing i need your healing great god i need your healing great god because the bible said according to the book of zachariah 9 11 to 12 the lord said he will return to you the lord said he will return he will return he will return to you the lord will restore the lord will restore unto you double according to the book of zachariah 9 from 11 to 12 the lord almighty will restore unto you double double of what you are looking for so that is the reason you need to raise that into the heavens and begin to call his name jehovah rapha Jehovah Rapha, by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ, heal me from anything caused sick in my body and in my expectation. In this document, heal me. In my womb, heal me. In my organs, heal me. In the in my business, heal me. In my children's life, heal them, oh Lord. Heal my marriage. Heal my marital settlement. Heal my job search. Oh God of my salvation, this is my expectation. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord our shepherd, heal me, mighty God. Heal me, great God. Is someone praying that prayer? Is someone praying that prayer with all desperation? As the Lord Almighty is distributing healing right now, I see a lot of people's situation change to congratulations because the Lord Almighty have declared that today, this very day, the Lord have declared that he will restore unto you double. The Lord have declared unto you, you that is praying that prayer with all seriousness, with your faith activated in Jehovah Rapha, as you have called on the name Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, God our shepherd, Jehovah Shalom, the one that gives us peace, the Lord Almighty has declared today that he will give you, he will restore you and give you double, double of what you are asking in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Prayer number five. You are going to pray this prayer. Every evil altars of my bloodline. One of the things that is disturbing people's life today is altar, family altars. Family altars is one of the big problem of Africa. Family altars, one of the big problem in America here. They speak against generation. The generation keep falling into the same trap that their parents fell into. You are going to pray that prayer now. That in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every evil altars of my bloodline, speaking against my rising, speaking against my healing, speaking against my expectation, call that expectation. Make sure you call that expectation where I put name it. Call the name of the expectation what you want God to do on this mountain. Every altars. Speaking in speaking against me, altars in my bloodline that is speaking against all God's strong ministries that is speaking against my life and my rising, healing and my expectation. I call down the fire of God to consume you, and I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ to undo whatever you have spoiled in my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I pray in that prayer. With all seriousness, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are justified and buried out of that altar, out of that altar bondage today by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Two minutes to pray that prayer. Two minutes to pray that very prayer. 
evil altars of my bloodline, speaking against my testimonies, speaking against my rising, speaking against my business, speaking against my getting married, speaking against my job, speaking against my business, speaking against my document, speaking against my visa. I call down the fire of God to consume you right now. Every evil altars of my bloodline, speaking against my womb, speaking against my organs, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I call down the fire of God to consume you. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ upon you to undo whatever you have spread in my life. I call down the fire of God against every evil altars of my blood land that is speaking against my academics that is speaking against the work of my hand be consumed by fire is someone praying that prayer one more minute one more minute pray that prayer with all seriousness one more minute evil altars of my bloodline speaking against my rising in life speaking against my career speaking against my job speaking against my business speaking against the fruit of my womb speaking against my health speaking against my document speaking against my job speaking against my visa be consumed by fire be consumed by fire i invoke the blood of jesus christ to undo whatever you have spread in my life in the mighty name of jesus christ is someone praying that prayer for your own deliverance us, begin to invoke the blood of Jesus Christ to undo whatever they have destroyed in your life, to repair whatever they have spread in your life. Pray that one prayer, pray one more minute on that prayer that the blood of Jesus Christ, I call on the blood of Jesus Christ against the evil altars of my father's house, against the evil altars of my mother's house, to repair everything that they have spread in my life, to repair anything that they have spread in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against such altar every evil altars of my father's house every evil altars of my mother's house that is speaking against my rising that is speaking against my expectation that is speaking against my business that is speaking against my document that is speaking against my visa that is speaking against my career that is speaking against my job that is speaking against my life that is speaking against my children that is speaking against my organ in the name of jesus christ be consumed by fire i invoke the blood of jesus christ against you i invoke the blood of jesus christ to repair everything that you have spread in my life in the mighty name of jesus christ as you declare it so shall it be in jesus name amen prayer number six the last one prayer number six you are going to pray i claim the seven seeds of the blessings of the blood of jesus christ i reclaim the seven seals of blessing christ's blood brought me brought me power i claim it in the name of jesus riches i claim it in the name of jesus wisdom i claim it in the name of jesus strength i claim it in the name of jesus honor i claim it in the name of jesus Glory, I claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray that prayer in the next two minutes. Two minutes. I reclaim the seven seeds of blessing. The blood of Jesus Christ brought me. I I reclaim my power back. I reclaim riches. I reclaim my wisdom. I reclaim strength. I reclaim strength to serve God. I reclaim strength to move on in life. I claim my honor. I claim my glory. I claim my blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is someone desperate and claiming their inheritance? This is your inheritance in Christ. If you are not seeing all these things in your life, it means that they have been stolen. It means that they are taken away from you. Begin to claim them back by the reason of the blood. That by the blood of Jesus Christ today, I claim the power that Christ brought 
for me. I claim the riches that Christ bought for me. I claim the wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing that Christ brought into my life. I claim them. I claim them. I claim them. One more minute in that prayer. One more minute. Begin to claim them with desperation. Claim them because everything that you are looking for is inside of this seven blessings. In strength, that is where sickness. If you don't have strength, that is that means they have used they have used sickness to replace strength. If you are dull, dull in talk, dull, you don't remember anything. That means they have used dullness to replace wisdom. If you don't have riches, poverty. If you are expressing poverty, dryness in your life, it means that they have used poverty to replace riches. If you don't have power, you are always weak. You can you don't have boldness to talk. You are always afraid. It means that they have used those things to replace power. If you are expressing disgrace all the time, disgrace and shame, it means that they have used it to replace your honor. If you are expressing a life of darkness, a life of shame and pity, it means that they have replaced your glory. If you are not seeing blessings in your life, for a long time now, you cannot even boast of blessing in your life. It means that they have replaced those bad situations with your blessing. Begin to claim all your things back. Now, these things are my inheritance and I claim them back today. Today, right now. By the blood of Jesus Christ, begin to claim them. That by the blood of Jesus Christ, I claim back my power. I claim back my riches. I claim back my wisdom. I claim back my strength. I claim back my honor. I claim back my glory. I claim back my blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to move to your prayer points. There are prayer points that God provided us. But you cannot just come to God's service without you not having what do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for you? This is where God look at people's hearts and their tears and God answer them speedily. So this is your time like Anna crying before God. This is your season now. This is your season with God that no man is hearing what you are saying, just you and God. Lift up your expectation on how you want to hold it. The things that you want to use, if it is your business, contact or anything, whatever point of contact that you are using, to tell God that this is what I have brought here that I need, that I want you to settle. Let the blood of Jesus Christ settle it for me today. Let the blood of Jesus Christ settle it for me today. You have 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes to pray this prayer. 10 minutes. Your 10 minutes start now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your 10 minutes start now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lift out your expectation. I told you yesterday and I told you on Monday to bring out your expectation. To write out your expectation. What do you want God to do for you? This is your 10 minutes. Begin to cry out to God with your 10 minutes. As I'm silent, Pray your 10 minutes. There are a lot of people that have long lists. Begin to name everything one by one. Describe how you want your things. You want your business to be like this. Describe how you want the business to be. You want your spouse. You want a man like this or like that. You want a woman that is like this or that. Begin to describe your expectation the way you want it. You want your document, five years document, ten years document. You don't need rejection anymore. Let the blood of Jesus speak for you. Let the blood of Jesus speak for you. Let the blood of Jesus speak for you. Begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray. Call the name of the things that you are looking for and describe 
it how you want it to be, how you want to receive it. Begin to describe it. Make sure you are specific in the name of Jesus. You have eight more minutes to go. someone praying this is your time with god this is your time with god your personal prayer this is your time with god just like anna prayed her own and god answered anna i don't know what you are looking for that same god that answered anna in the book of samuel that same god will answer you today today in the name of jesus christ as you are pouring your heart to God that no one is hearing you, or if someone is hearing you, it does not matter. You are pouring your heart to God. You are talking to God that this is what you want. This is what you want, oh God. And they describe what you want. Describe how you want it, when you want it. Be specific with your expectation. As you are praying that prayer, be serious. Please, if you are in a place of distraction, make sure you move away. In all, you come back later and pray this same, this particular prayer. This is your time with God. This is your time with God. Begin to pour out your heart. You have seven more minutes. The Bible speaking according to the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 6. It said, Nevertheless, I will bring health. I will bring healing to you. Uh, I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. That is the word of God. So let your faith be activated. Let your faith be activated that everything that you are read, you are asking God of. This is the word of God to you. This is the word of God to you. Even after this program, you declare this word. That God, this is what you said. You said this concerning this expectation. You write this scripture down and begin to remind God that God, you said that this is what your word said. That you will bring me health in this area of my life. You will heal this, my document. You will heal my body. You will heal my business. You will heal my children. You promise, oh Lord, from your book in Jeremiah 33 verse 6, perform your word fulfill your word that is why you start quoting to god because that is what god has given to us today that he will heal us he will bring us health he will heal us he will bring us abundance he will he will make us to enjoy peace and security this is your word this is your word we have five more minutes to go five more minutes to go begin to pray press desperately to god let god see that you really need this blessing let god know that you really need this blessing so 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 so, so time before the winter of 90 days before the end of this year you need this particular blessing before the end of this year make sure you are accurate make sure you are describing what you want make sure be specific and quoting this scripture quoting the scriptures that you have in your expectation that god remember me this day remember me this day show me compassion and remember me bring me my health bring me my healing heal me give me abundant joy and peace and security this expectation must not go home the same way i came if someone pray that prayer, four more minutes to go, four more minutes to go, begin to rest all your things to heaven and say, God, answer me. Pray like Anna. Pray like Anna. Anna came to a program like this and went back home with happiness. Anna came to a program like this and went back home with happiness. It is your own season in the name of Jesus Christ. As you call upon the name of the Lord, just as God has declared in the book of Jeremiah 33 verse 6, the Lord Almighty bring you health. The Lord Almighty bring you healing. The Lord Almighty make you to enjoy abundance and security. The Lord Almighty grant that expectation that you are praying about in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus you have three more minutes to go
minutes to go, two more minutes to go. Begin to declare that let the blood of Jesus Christ grant God the right to answer this expectation. Begin to remind God that let the blood of Jesus Christ grant you the right to answer my expectation. Oh God, you have one more minute to go. That let the blood of, begin to remind God of the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to remind Jehovah Rapha of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you have one more minute to go remind God of the blood of Jesus. That because of the blood of Jesus Christ grant my expectation, oh God. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ grant my expectation. Don't let me go home the same way I came. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ change my situation. Change my story on this mountain because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be my defense on this issue. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be my defense on this expectation. Grant my expectation. Now begin to celebrate God. Lift that into heaven and begin to celebrate God. Give God all the glory for that expectation. Give God the praise the Lord. Thank you because I know you have had me. I thank you. Begin to celebrate God on that expectation that God, thank you. Thank you for answering my prayers. Thank you for answering my prayers. If someone celebrating God, I give God thanks. Thank you, Lord because I know you have had me today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now lift up that expectation to heaven. Lift that expectation to heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. That very expectation that you just prayed now, lift it up to heaven as we pray together in the name of Jesus. All I need you to say is just be saying amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and start waving that thing to heaven. You start waving that expectation to heaven as I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, oh, Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Rapha, our great healer. It is written in your word according to the book of Jeremiah 33 verse Six, your word said, Oh God, you will bring health, you will bring cure. Oh God, bring us cure, bring your people cure. Oh God, bring your people cure. Oh God, in this program, bring them abundance and peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, according to your word of God. For you never lie, oh God, what you say you will do, and that is what you do. Oh God, as your people are lifting their expectation to heaven, oh God, I call upon you, Jehovah Rapha, the healer. I call you. Oh Jehovah Shalom, the one that brings peace. Oh Lord, that peace that you said you will bring. Oh Lord, according to your word in Jeremiah 33, fulfill your word this day. Change this situation of your people. This expectation that they are holding, oh God. Bring them peace. Bring them cure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your word also said, oh Lord, according to your book in Luke 9 verses 1. Lord, you have given me power and authority and over all demons and to cure disease. I declare and I decree. Whatever thing that is called leprosy. In that very expectation. That is making men to laugh at you. That is making men to disgust you. In the name of Jesus Christ that is making men to hate you. Whatever thing that is called sickness, whatever thing that is called disease in that body, in that expectation, the Lord Almighty has given me power and authority over that demon in charge, in charge of that situation, in charge that is holding that expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare those demons bind in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast those demons out of your expectation. I cut off the hand of water demons. I cut off the hand of every agent of the devil. I cut off the hand of family agent, family servant that are representing that your family in the covenant causing things to be difficult in you. 
causing things to be difficult in your life, causing that expectation to be withheld. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cut off their hand from your expectation because of the authority that the Jesus Christ has given to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you are our healer. This very hour, show mercy on everyone. Show mercy on everyone that is presented here today. Bring cure, bring healing upon anything called infirmity in that expectation, anything called affliction in their body, anything called affliction in their document, anything called infirmity in their document, anything called infirmity and affliction in their work, in their work, in their business, in the work of their hand, in their career, in their marital settlement, in their womb, oh God of my salvation. You are the great healer, show mercy, and let your come today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the blind receive physical and spiritual sight, oh Lord, from henceforth. Let them see great opportunities. Those that their eyes have been blind, those that their eyes are blind that they don't see opportunities, those that are physically blind, that wherever they go, where opportunities are, their eyes are blind. May their eyes be healed from that blindness in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that cannot even see in the spiritual realm, their eyes are blind and things are taken away from them every night where they sleep. God, give them eyes. Give their eyes enough light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let healing come upon their eyes. Let healing cure come upon their eyes in the name of Jesus so that they will see clearly in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are actually blind, those that are partial blind, give them healing. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, our great healer, in the name of Jesus Christ. May they see great opportunities from henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my God, may the Lord Almighty take away every obstacle from that expectations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord Almighty take away, may the Lord Almighty take away the right of Satan, the right of that sickness, the right of that delay. May the Lord Almighty take away terrible affliction. May the Lord Almighty take away disease from that body. May the Lord Almighty take away terrible affliction from that expectation, from that document issue, from that visa issue, from that business issue, from that job issue, that you are experiencing negative, that you are experiencing disappointment and delay and rejection. May the Lord Almighty take away that affliction. May the Lord Almighty take away that infirmity from that your expectations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord Almighty take away affliction from your marriage. May the Lord Almighty take away affliction from your career. May the Lord Almighty take away affliction from the work of your hand according to his word in Deuteronomy 7 verse 15. The Bible also declared in the book of Matthew 9, 35, the Bible said that Jesus Christ went about doing good and, 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 and preaching the gospel and healing all those that were sick. Our Lord Jesus Christ is here today. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the great healer, he is here today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I stand in the authority that is in his name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our Lord. Come, Jesus Christ, come. Jesus Christ, our healer, come. I know you are right here, Emmanuel. Bring healing and restoration upon the life of everyone that is presented here today. Whatever thing that is caused sick in their life and destiny, I don't know because they are numerous. For your word said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. It is only you, O Lord, that deliver them from them all. Many came with affliction. I don't have power of my own. All power belongs to you, Jesus Christ. All authority belongs to you, Jesus Christ. The same way you did in your time, you are still alive, Jesus Christ. You are still called the healer. You are still called Jehovah Shalom. You are still called Jehovah Rapha. You are still called the great healer. You are still called our shepherd. Arise, oh Lord. Arise, Jesus Christ. Come, Jesus, and bring restoration. Bring healing into the life of everyone. Bring healing into that expectation. Bring healing into that womb. Bring healing into that document. Bring healing into marital settlement. Bring healing into the marriage of people. Bring healing into that body. Bring healing into that business. Bring healing into that job. Bring healing upon their children. Bring healing upon their academics. Bring healing upon their womb. Bring healing, 
oh God, healing of all kinds. Lay healing. Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, your word said, according to the book of Hebrew 13, verses 8, your word said, oh God, you were the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you did, oh God, in your time, when your ministry, oh God, when you were um, administering to people, you were still alive, Jesus Christ. What you did yesterday, what you did today, and what you will do forever. Also, do it here in today's service, right now in the life of everyone. Trusting you, oh God, with their expectation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For many are the afflictions of the righteous. It is only you that can deliver them from them all. Take away anything called affliction from their life. Take away anything called affliction in their documents. Take away anything called affliction in their visa. Take away anything called affliction in their business. Take away anything called affliction in their family. Take away anything called affliction in the work of their hand. Take away anything called affliction in their marital settlement. Take away anything called affliction in their womb. Take away anything called affliction in their uterus take away anything called affliction in their organs take away anything called affliction in their head take away anything called affliction in their business oh lord take away anything called affliction in their visa take away these afflictions oh god of my salvation read them as a prayer read their life as a prayer jehovah rapper jesus the great healer read their life as a prayer and answer their request in the name of jesus christ lord have mercy have mercy upon every nation represented here today, Lord. Heal them, oh God, and grant their expectation. Heal them, oh God, and heal their, uh, uh, their, their desires in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn that expectation that they have lifted up to you, oh Lord. That expectation that is being lifted up to heaven. Oh Lord, my God, I call upon you, Jehovah Rapha. Bring your healing and restoration, oh Lord Jesus, to their heart desire. Turn it to congratulation, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, for their bones, oh God, have been troubled. Their hearts have been troubled. For every trouble, give them double congratulation. For every pain that they have gone through, give them double congratulation. That before the winner of 90 days, before the end of April, before on the 17th of April, oh Lord, that this expectation will be changed to then we come back, oh God, singing your praise, Jesus Christ. I declare that before the window of on the 17th of April, before the window of on the 30th of April, before the window of 90 days, every expectation that is lifted up, you are coming back with your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of the Almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever thing the Lord do it, it is forever. No man shall ask for it. No demon shall subtract from it. The Lord Almighty has done it. There is no need to worry. And you will come back to celebrate God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ into that expectation. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ into your desires. May the Lord Almighty read you as a prayer. The yoke has been destroyed. Every cause is standing against that expectation. That cause is broken by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Christ. The cause standing against that expectation is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against every altar. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against every coffin. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against every water demon that is standing against your rising, that is standing against your, your testimonies, that is standing against your expectations, that is standing against your fruitfulness, that is standing against your congratulations. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against such kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they surrender. May they lose their stronghold of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are delivered. I stand in the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ, and I invoke the efficacy of the blood, the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. I invoke that blood. I invoke that power into your expectation. Carry your congratulations. Anyone holding that testimony, I cut off the hand of that strong man. Every strong man of your father's house, every strong man of your mother's house, every evil altar standing against your rising, standing against your shining, standing against your light. I bind that strong man. I cut off the hand of that strong man out of your expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. Congratulations. I declare you congratulated. I declare you congratulated. You are discharged from the spiritual prison. You are discharged and paid from the spiritual prison by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ. Wherever they have kept your soul, wherever they have kept you imprisoned in the spiritual 
children because you broke any spiritual law by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ you were discharged and paid by the blood of Jesus Christ you were discharged and paid from that spiritual prison by the blood of Jesus Christ every spiritual prison that have imposed sickness upon your body that have imposed sickness upon your destiny that have imposed sickness upon your career that have imposed sickness upon your document that have imposed sickness upon your visa that have imposed sickness upon your marital settlement that have imposed sickness upon anything that is troubling your life today i declare as a servant of god standing in the authority that's in the name of jesus christ and by the power the efficacy that's in the blood of jesus christ you are discharged from that prison in the name of jesus christ you are discharged and acquitted from that spiritual prison your soul is released from that spiritual prison in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ Christ, Christ took all your infirmity. He took all your sickness. He took all your transgression. Christ died for us to receive glory. Christ died for us to receive honor. Christ died for us to receive wisdom. Christ died for us to receive riches. Christ died for us to receive power. Christ died for us to receive strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, that seven fold of blessings start manifesting in your life. From today, go because you are discharged from every spiritual prison that is holding you. You are now in a better covenant. And that better, better covenant which the blood of Jesus Christ provided speak for you from henceforth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the seven seal of the blood of Jesus, the seven seal that the blood of Jesus Christ brought, the blessing today, from today go i pray that those things will manifest in your in your hand you will have power to speak when you want to speak you will not become a slave among slaves in the name of jesus christ you shall sing songs of deliverance in the mighty name of jesus christ riches will be in your home in the name of jesus christ wisdom is your portion wisdom to do all things is your portion because in christ lies all treasures of wisdom carry the treasures of wisdom from this mountain to excel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No longer will you see shame and disgrace because Christ, one of the benefits that Christ died for is honor. You are lifted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not live a life of reproach. The glory of God shine upon your life and destiny from henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ. The curse that is making you to be cursed, that curse is cursed. In the name of Jesus Christ, any cause that is making you to be cursed physically, I declare that cause cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that cause out of your life by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not just speaking of my own word, but I am declaring because of the belief I have in the blood of Jesus Christ that has set us free. Every cause moving around you and moving about around you, causing disappointment and delay, rejection, denying in your life. That cause is caused today by the blood of Jesus Christ. That cause sits fire from your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Master Jesus Christ. Thank you for your deliverance today. May your name alone be glorified. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. I seal all your blessings by the blood of Jesus Christ. You will go and manifest God's glory and come back with your congratulations testimonies before the end of April, before on the 17th and within the window of 90 days. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Now lift up your water. If you have your water with you, please just signify that I have my water. The water is a point of contact. Just as you have your prayer point, you are waving it as a point of contact. The water is like a point of contact. If you have your water, please signify, type that you have yours. And let's proceed. And the water can be used as drinking, as a point of contact for healing. You can put it, sprinkle it upon the document as your faith tells you to do with the water. Do it. I have a, I have a lady. I don't know if she's still here or something. That lady was going through one situation. There are a lot of testimony I cannot even remember. She, she, went, she put that water, drop and that water in her pocket or she bet with it. She said, okay, I think they said that she should come and pay a tax of big money of tax or something big tax of money but when she bit with she said she put that thing she dropped the water 
of fire inside of her water. She, she used it, she dropped a little and she went, she used it to bed and she went to the to the court. The issue that they have concluded, they changed it. She got faithful right away. The issue was cancelled and terminated. So there are a lot of people that have shared a lot of testimonies about the water that I cannot really remember anymore. But if your faith does not carry you to use the water, there's no problem. But those that believe, their belief shall work for them. So whatever thing you think that you want to use the water for, you have fine blood, or you have anything in your in, in your body, in your organs, document business, you can use this water as a point of contact because the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to turn that ordinary water to be fire. That water that you are looking at right now is, is not going to be ordinary water again. It's going to be fire because I am calling the name of God. I am not calling any other name and you are not buying the water from me. It is the name of God and the power of the Holy God that is going to flow into that ordinary water and turn that water to be fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nobody plays with fire. No demons play with fire. If water is too cool, it makes demons to stay. But the water is going to be a fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now to open the bottle of the water and let's declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God, I call upon you because all power, powers belong to you. Strength and might are in your hand, Holy Spirit of God. Anointing, O oh Lord, is your clothing. Higher, O oh God, strength and might is in your bosom. Restoration power lives in your hands, Holy Spirit of God. Breakthroughs and miracles, O oh God of my salvation, they are the demonstrations of your power, Holy Spirit of God. Signs and wonders, Holy Spirit of God, are your lifestyle. Ah, Holy Spirit of God, you are perfect in all your ways according to the book of psalm 104 verses 4 holy spirit you make the wind you make the wind as your messenger the lord almighty made the flame of fire as his servant holy spirit this is your this these are your instrument the wind oh god is your messenger the flame of fire is your servant oh god i submit to your authority holy spirit of god i submit to you forever holy spirit of god send your fire Send your flame of fire into that water. In the name of Jesus Christ, send your wind, oh Lord, as your messenger. Your wind and your fire, that they are your messengers, they are your servant. Send it, oh God, into that water right now. The two messengers of God, which are the wind, which is wind and fire. Let that wind and fire, according to the book of Psalm 104, verses 4, let the wind, and let the flame of fire of the Holy Ghost go into that water right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the water, the flame of fire, the flame of fire, and the wind that will flow into that water. That Those are the messengers of God. That everywhere you sprinkle that water or drink it, that messengers of God, which is the flame of fire, and the wind of God shall blow away every demon from their hiding places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, my God, turn this ordinary water of God to be fire, to be power, to be healing, to be signs and wonders, to be miracles, to be restoration, to be breakthroughs. Oh God of my salvation, in the name of Jesus, turn this water, oh God, to whatever, oh God, your people want to use it for. Let that water and fire, as your messenger, the wind and the fire have entered it, oh God. Let it work in the hands of your people. Whatever thing they want to use it for, whatever good thing that they want to use it for, oh God, let that thing bring good report. Let that thing bring good result for your own glory, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, my God, I believe in you. I believe in your power. I believe in your resurrection power, Holy Spirit of God. Let your resurrection power begin to flow into that water right now. That anywhere they will sprinkle that water, anytime they will drink that water or use it to bed, sickness shall disappear. Demons shall fade away from their hiding places. In the name of Jesus, it shall bring flourishness in the work of their hand. It shall bring good reports, good news in their document, in their business, in their job, in their career, in their exam, in their academics, in their visa, in their marital settlement, anyone that is marked that they will never get married, oh God of my salvation, this water shall delete every mark of stagnation, every mark of disappointment, whatever thing that is making you to be single, in the name of Jesus Christ, you that is using the water, 
as you are using this water, any mark that is marked on you, the fire of the Holy Ghost shall destroy that thing out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the fire and the power of God shall break that yoke out of your life because the Bible said, according to the book of Isaiah 10, 27, we said on that day, the yoke shall be destroyed. As the, as the fire and the flame of God and the wind of God is entering that water, as you use it, according to how you want it the fire of god shall break whatever thing called obstacle standing against your marital settlement standing against your business standing against your visa standing against your document standing against your healing healing of all kinds today in the name of jesus christ you are holding fire today you are holding the power of god physically in your hand in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth mighty god we thank you we give you all the glory as you drink the water as well, anything inside of your body that is not of God, you shall throw them out. That that water we 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 invoke things, things that are not of God, they will be uprooted from your system in the name of Jesus, and healing shall come upon your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Now begin to celebrate God. Begin to celebrate God. Begin to celebrate God and give God all the praise for the successful program of today. Tomorrow, come with your anointing oil. Tomorrow, we are doing the coffin. Come with your anointing oil and maybe with tissue. I don't know if you are going to throw up or something. Tomorrow is another package of the Holy Spirit. We are talking about the Holy Spirit tomorrow and the work of the Holy Spirit by God's grace. If God permits, we are talking about the Holy Spirit and let His power uproot whatever thing that is not in whatever thing that is not of God. Let the power of the Holy Spirit flow tomorrow and we are using his instrument the anointing or the oil so bring your oil tomorrow in the mighty name of jesus and maybe your tissue paper or something that you will cough on in the mighty name of jesus the lord almighty shall completely restore us to the seven blessings that jesus christ have given to us yesterday we talked about altar today we talk about the blood of jesus tomorrow we are talking about the holy spirit that is the completion of the completion 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 so that as you go you are on fire and you are expecting your expectations in the mighty name of Jesus. And it shall be it according to your faith as you celebrate God. Let's give God praise and give God all our direction. We are meeting the same time. We are meeting the same time. We are meeting the same time. On Monday, there will be no service on Monday. There will be no service on Monday, but it will be a day where you go and give God thanksgiving. One hour praise on your own. Sing praises to God. If you don't know what to sing, gather Psalms. Gather Psalms and start reading Psalms of praise to God. On Monday, one hour, schedule psalms that you will sing to God. That God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you have done for this service. That is our on Monday service. On your own, no life service. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you go and give God praise. And normally, when we do fasting, we dedicate one day for praise. So on Monday is your praise day. Dance before God. You put earphone in your ears sing praises to god and dance before god lifting that expectation and say god thank you you have done it already you have done it already you are praising god and lifting that expectation and thanking god for what god has done that is the monday service there is no life service that monday belongs to you to so go and dance praises or read psalms to god and lifting that expectation to celebrate god that is your own day as you do that god bless you in the mighty name of jesus christ just as jehoshaphat did jehoshaphat they sang praise and God went ahead to go and destroy the kingdom of their enemies. They now came back and start and start packing the goods of their enemies. We are taking we are taking the whole shepherd story in the book of Chronicles. We are taking that story for our own victory. And, we, and maybe I will talk about it tomorrow a little bit. God bless you. Please share the program if you have not shared in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you have not liked the program, please like the program. It makes Facebook to recommend it to those that are not following, those that are not getting notifications. If you have not liked, please like it. So that Facebook can recommend us always to those that are not getting notifications. YouTube, God bless you. I know that there are a lot of you that are in YouTube. You are in YouTube. You have been there. I know. I see you people. God bless you people. You are not forgotten. I know that you are watching from the YouTube and you are watching from the second page. Uh, God bless you as you are doing that, and your expectation will not be cut short as you stick to the as you stick to YouTube. And some of you that you know that maybe you want to get notification. The program is always going on in YouTube as well. There are people watching from YouTube. So God bless those that are in YouTube and congratulations to you. I'm waiting for you people to come and share your testimonies here. 
these very quarters we are entering the next second quarter of the year those in youtube i'm waiting for your testimony if you're sharing your testimony you said that i've been watching from youtube and you share your testimony i know god will visit you people in that youtube in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth we give god all the glory we give god all the praise for successful program let's lift up our hands and celebrate god and share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore in the name of jesus christ i seal your blessing congratulations in jesus name amen shalom Father, Lord God, I thank you. I give you all the glory because I know on this very program, oh God, that we are about to do, God of my salvation, you shall rebuke people's life. You shall rebuke their altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every destroyed altar, oh God, be rebuked. On this mountain, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone's life that is called destroyed, everyone's life that is called limitation, on this mountain, oh God, as we embark, oh God, in our prayers, God of my salvation, rebuild oh god repair them to heaven blessings in the name of jesus christ let your kingdom rest upon them every of their expectation let it be answered in the name of jesus you did it in the time of dwell lord you did it in the time of the book of dwell father when the people forsake you oh god their altar was broken but when they return back to you oh god you came back to restore everything that the palmer one the kankan one the locusts the invaders have eaten you restore them god you are not by Yes, you are not respecter of any man. What you did in the time of dwell, come and do it again in this our generation. Come and do it again, oh God, in the life of everyone that is watching me, oh God, that is experiencing limitation, that is experiencing disgrace, that is experiencing delay, rejection. Restore them back to honor. Be jealous of your people. You are the one, oh Lord, that died for them. Be jealous of your people and restore their honor. No longer, oh God, we mock us, mock them anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.